In 1975, a movie hit the screens that would forever change the way people looked at the ocean. You may have heard of it, a little film called Jaws. But did you know that behind the scenes, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to be uncovered? Keep watching this video to find out more. Have you ever wondered if there are any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? Or perhaps you remember the first time you watched it? Share your experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Whether it's a thrilling moment in the theater or a nostalgic viewing with loved ones, we want to hear your stories and memories. Share them in the comments below. In 1975, a film called Jaws hit the screens, creating a big stir in popular culture. Directed by Steven Spielberg, the movie followed a coastal town haunted by a giant man eating shark. People were really into it, and the film became a huge success. It wasn't just entertaining, it made a big impression on popular culture. The movie's influence spread through different things. It started a trend, leading to a bunch of shark-themed movies. Jaws also gave birth to the idea of big summer movies, changing how movies were made. Its success showed how a gripping story and great direction could really work. Jaws wasn't just any movie, it became a big part of culture. The quotes and scenes stuck in people's minds. The music, made by John Williams, became famous and made people feel tense and scared. Apart from the movie, Jaws led to spin-offs and things you could buy. Fans wanted Jaws stuff, like shirts and toys. The movie's success even led to theme park rides and video games, making it even more famous. Years later, Jaws still matters. Its influence on movies and culture is clear, with new generations still feeling its impact. The movie's ability to grab people's attention and stick with them shows how powerful it is. In a famous movie, the shark was ranked as one of the top villains by the AFI. To make the shark scene scary, the filmmakers built three big fake sharks that could move. During a test screening in the Midwest, one scene scared the audience a lot when the shark suddenly appeared. This scared them so much that they missed an important line from the main character. To help them calm down, the filmmakers added a funny part to the scene. The movie still scares people today because it shows how scary the ocean can be and how hard it is to escape from danger. It's a classic suspenseful horror movie. Martha's Vineyard became known as a film location in 1975 when it appeared in a famous movie directed by Steven Spielberg. In the opening credits of the movie, Spielberg used strange sounds of birds, similar to Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. In 2010, there were shark attacks in Sharm El Sheikh, an Egyptian resort. The way authorities handled the situation was similar to what happened in the movie Jaws. They didn't believe there was a problem at first, resisted closing the beaches, and only acted after a shark attack happened near the shore. They even misidentified the shark. Interestingly, the shark eventually left on its own. So, Martha's Vineyard became famous for being in a movie that honored Hitchcock's style. The similarities between the events in Sharm El Sheikh and what happened in Jaws show how movies can sometimes affect real-life situations. Robert Shaw and Richard Dreyfuss had a strained relationship during filming. They argued frequently, adding tension to their characters, Hooper and Quint. However, Dreyfuss later clarified that they only had one major disagreement on set. Murray Hamilton, who played Mayor Larry Vaughn, had appeared in four films nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars Anatomy of a Murder, The Hustler, The Graduate, and Jaws. Director Steven Spielberg initially wanted Joe Spinal and Frank Pest to portray two characters fishing for the shark at night. Pest was meant to be the one falling into the water while Spinal shouted to him. Unfortunately, Pest couldn't join the cast on Martha's Vineyard. In a scene where Lee Firo, known as Mrs. Kintner, smacks Roy Scheider's character, it wasn't acting. According to Scheider, Firo's hits were real, making it one of his most painful acting experiences. Firo herself mentioned in interviews that during one take, Scheider's glasses fell off from her slap. Regarding the famous USS Indianapolis speech, Carl Gottlieb downplayed John Milius's involvement, crediting Robert Shaw instead. Gottlieb stated that Milius contributed only one line earlier in the movie, spoken by Quint, offering to find the shark for three and kill it for ten. Gottlieb also cited two sci-fi films as inspirations for Jaws' portrayal of the shark. He referenced the thing from another world, and it came from outer space for their use of suspense by keeping the creature off camera until the climax. In considering the cast for the movie, Gene Hackman was a potential choice for the role of Martin Brody. 
The film gained insights from Fabian Causto, grandson of Jacques-Yves Causto, who developed a great white shark-shaped submarine to study these creatures. Contrary to the portrayal in the movie, Kaustos' research revealed that great whites are cautious beings that communicate with each other using their fins and body language. Once filming wrapped up, Steven Spielberg, the director, endured significant stress. After spending a night in a Boston hotel, he flew back to Los Angeles, where he suffered a panic attack due to months of pressure. For weeks afterward, Spielberg experienced nightmares about still being on the ocean and filming exacerbated by sleeping on a waterbed that subconsciously reminded him of being at sea. Richard Dreyfuss recalls his initial encounter with Steven Spielberg, describing a young man with a distinctive leather hat. Spielberg's talent was evident from the start. On board the Orca, Quint enjoys Narragansett Beer, a well-known brand in New England and a sponsor of the Boston Red Sox. John Williams, the composer, initially played a humorous score for Spielberg, who later acknowledged its pivotal role in the movie's success. Spielberg admitted that without Williams' score, the film would have been only half as successful. Williams credited the movie with launching his career. In the movie, Robert Shaw, who hailed from England, sang Spanish ladies while loading the boat with Hooper and Brody. The song, a British chanty, was altered to mention Boston instead of England. Shaw possibly learned the tune during his time teaching in Saltburn by the Sea. Richard Dreyfuss, known for his roles in several acclaimed films, including The Graduate, American Graffiti, and The Goodbye Girl, also appeared in the movie. In a scene where Brody types his report on Chrissy's death, a typo reads Corner's office instead of Corner's, which might symbolize Brody's emotional state. These details add depth to the characters and the film's atmosphere. During the making of the famous movie, there was a lot of pressure because of a possible strike by actors. But the team didn't let that stop them from telling an exciting story. After the movie came out, people got really excited about it. There were some crazy things that happened because people were scared. For example, in Southern California, lifeguards thought dolphins were sharks and cleared the beach. Sadly, in Florida, people mistakenly attacked a small whale, thinking it was a shark. After they finished filming, the second orca, which was used in sinking scenes, ended up on a beach near Minimshi. Over time, it became somewhat famous, but people sometimes damaged it. As of 2019, most of the boat is buried in the sand, and it's not in good shape. Boaters can still see it, though, and it reminds them of how popular the movie was. In 1975, nine days prior to filming, neither Quint nor Hooper had been cast for the movie. The actor Robert Shaw, who played Quint, teased Richard Dreyfuss, his co-star, about being out of shape. Shaw bet Dreyfuss he couldn't do 10 push-ups, but Dreyfuss countered confidently that he could do 20. To ensure Dreyfuss's integrity, Roy Scheider, a former boxer and another co-star, oversaw the challenge. Scheider remarked that very few men could manage 20 push-ups and implied Dreyfuss wasn't among them. Steven Spielberg, the director, attended the first FI Life Achievement Award as a guest of his producer Richard D. Zanuck. This event honored Spielberg's lifelong hero, John Ford. This took place in Los Angeles on March 31, 1973. Spielberg was recognized for his films The Sugarland Express and the one we're discussing Jaws. 